Well, hello once again. I'm Pastor John Cress here at First Baptist of Horton, Kansas, and each week we come together to hear what God has to say concerning our lives through how He has worked through His servants' lives in the past. We go to His Holy Word, the Bible, and gleam something for it. Today we're looking in the book of 1 Samuel, and we're going at chapter 8. And we're going to be looking specifically at verses 4 through 7. Please join with me. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. And they said to him, Behold, you have grown old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king for us to judge us like all the nations. But the thing was displeasing in the sight of Samuel, when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in regard to all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. There's a lot here. Um, just as I was reading it, I have one, started with one point in mind, and I'm seeing several. Uh, but what took place? Let, let's start there. Samuel, who has been the man of God amongst the people of Israel for quite some time, has judged righteously and fairly. But he is growing old, and he cannot continue much longer. His death is not that far off. But he wants to make sure the next leader is well-trained. He is hoping his sons would take up that responsibility. They are Joel and Abijah. But what we do read at the beginning of this chapter is they perverted the justice. They took bribes. They did everything exactly opposite of their dad. So at one point that just because you were raised in a godly home doesn't mean you will automatically be righteous yourself. Our relationship with God is independent. And we need to individually make sure our lives are safe. We can do all we can for our children in laying a firm foundation, not only in truth, but in love. But they are the ones who are going to have to make that decision. Hopefully, and prayerfully, they will follow Christ. But... Once the people of Israel saw how Samuel's sons were, they, they realized they did not want them as rulers. And instead of seeking God for wisdom, which they should have done, they looked around. They looked at all the other nations. Israel only had judges up to this point in time. And the judges even weren't all over all of Israel. They judged over certain tribes at various times, sometimes even overlapping one another. And their influence was only as long as they lived. And then another oppressor come in. Israel saw all the other nations, and it was lasting empires. It was stability. And for them, the grass was greener on the other side of the fence. Why do we keep being raided by enemies? Because we don't have a strong central government. We need a king, not just an area judge, but a centralized government. Samuel, appoint us a king. This disheartened Samuel. And here comes point two. Is when something disheartens us, why? For Samuel, I think it would have dual purpose. Because he knew this wasn't God's will, which is a great reason to be disheartened. When people are not doing God's will and it, it fatigues you, it gives you great angst, praise be to God that you have that emotional sensitivity, that spiritual connectedness to realize that, and you want to make a change. But God even hints that there might be another reason. Because he says, Samuel, they did not reject you, but they rejected me. A lot of times we can take those personal attacks on God 
as our own, especially what we picture God wants us to do. God told Samuel, I got this. They are rejecting me, but I've made preparations. But don't worry, they're not taking it on you. You've done great. You can continue what you're doing until I call you home. But do not see this as a personal attack. They're rejecting me, not you. Many times we do that too. We just want to take everything that seemingly we're doing the godly thing and the world is against us. Even the church is against us. And we just feel personal, personally attacked. God says, no, if you're following my will, they're not attacking you, they're attacking me. And just as a reminder of, we're not in this alone. And lastly, God had made provision. Because in Deuteronomy and the books of the law, God says, one day you will have a king. And here's what he will do. And that's how Samuel came up with these listings of some of the things which he had told the Israelites that the king would do. God wasn't writing a king off because his son is the king of kings. And his son, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, would come. And he would come as a king. So a king was still in the picture. But the, God wanted the people to follow his plan and his timing. And so God said, okay, this is what you want. I'll give it to you. And we see what happens when we rush God's plan. For the first king, lasted a good many years, 40 plus years, Saul. But it was far from the perfect kingdom. Meantime, God was raising the right king, David. And he made him a man after God's own heart. So he could impart God's wisdom, God's love to the people and unite them. Saul really didn't unite them except for battle against foreign enemies. But David did his part to unite them under God. Going back to Samuel. All this is being said that even when the world seems to be going chaotic and going against all our endeavors, trust God. He will make a way through. It may not be the way we expect, but He will. So, like I said, there's a lot here in this passage this morning, but I just encourage you to meditate on it. Find out, are you feeling personally attacked? Do you see how you have entrusted not only your children, but maybe your spiritual children, and yet they seem to have wandered. Are you trusting God in those times when things are going awry? Or are you too busy fretting? God is in control. Let's pray. Lord, these are just three small lessons, and, and these three four verses of 1 Samuel 8. And we've been in and out in those places many times before. We may not be choosing the next leader, but dear Lord, we may be just trying to get through our schedule of what we think needs to be done for your kingdom here on earth. And when things go awry, go against our plans, our efforts to see your righteousness. We can get upset. We can get see chaos all around us. But help us to hear your voice. Go to you first, even before listening to the plans of others or even listening to the mind, our own minds of what to do. Go to you. Seek your peace and your presence and ask for your wisdom. How do we proceed? Because we know if we go any other way, it will fail. But if we trust in you, you will provide. You are the great provider. Help us during our times when we are in a struggle, but also help us when we are in times of great plenty 
great abundance, and everything is supposed to be going smoothly. Help us be wise in all these areas and trust in you to see us through. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you and love having you join us. But as always, continue to bless others. And in doing so, find yourself blessed. See you next time.